Hello everybody, this is Mary Shores and I wanted to just take a minute. I am in between two podcasts uh, today. So I was on one about an hour ago and I'm going to be on another one at 1.30. So I had a few minutes and I wanted to jump on and share a very exciting announcement with everyone regarding Hay House. So some of you might know that I have just published a book with Hay House. It's been very exciting. It's called Conscious Communications. Here it is right here, y'all. We'll talk about this in a moment. But um, I got to do a Facebook Live on the Hay House channel. It was very exciting. It went for about an hour and it actually did very, very well. So well, as a matter of fact, that I'm excited to announce that Hay House has invited me to do a monthly series. Now, this is just overwhelmingly good news for for me, for my team, for all of you who want to who want to watch and participate with this, it's, it's going to be, um, I think, groundbreaking for everyone involved. So other than that, I just want to say I've had the flu all week. It has been extremely excruciating. It's been a long time since I was that actually sick. So I went to Arizona last weekend and or actually the it's been two weekends ago now and i got really really sick on my trip back i don't know what happened but i ended up with the flu and it was just terrible so if i sound a little off that's exactly the reason why so i thought that what i would do today is just share some of the concepts that i'm going to go over during my debut hay house live series so it's going to be on january 8th at noon Eastern and in order to watch it you just have to have liked the Hay House page or have liked the Mary Shores page. Also if you are a member of Fearless Ambition or Declaring Gratitude we'll also be broadcasting it um, in those groups. So what I really want to focus on especially during the first episode with Hay House is you know, January 8th, it's New Year, New you, you. It's time to welcome in this very exciting year of 2018. I know for one, I am so excited about everything that I'm going to create in the year 2018. So I've written out eight things that I think will really help us focus on manifesting a great 2018. They are tell a new story, keep your vessel clean, make every choice count, be grateful, process the bad shit, and eliminate negative words, as well as create a new menu for yourself. So create a 2018 menu for yourself. So starting right at the beginning, tell a new story. What do I mean by that? Well, in chapter two of Conscious Communications, you know, it's we're really talking about how we all have these stories that we focused on for our entire lives, and everyone has Everyone has like the negative things that have happened to us. And what I have noticed is that some of us can get in a pattern of becoming a victim to our stories in the past. And so in the book, I share a short little process to help you rewrite a new story for yourself. Now, I am not at all suggesting that you drop your story from your life. That's not even possible because your story has made you who you are. But what I want to explain to you is that the word you say to yourself about yourself will become your identity. And so it's very important that when you think about these stories from your past, especially the tragic ones, that you are focusing on the triumphant moments of those stories. Because the most beautiful part of the story is truly in when you learned to move on or you know, when, what were the lessons that you learned from the stories? And when you focus on that more than the negativity that happened, more than the tragedy, you will become a stronger, more resilient person. You know, if we were to choose a word for 2018, and I know that in a lot of the speaking events that I'm being invited to, it's all about the word empowerment. So empowerment is going to be a big word in 2018. And how do we step into our empowerment is we connect more to the triumphs of our lives instead of the tragedies. So my number one thing in my eight steps for a great 2018 is definitely learn to tell a new story. 
The next one is keeping your vessel clean. Now, this is like such a perfect day for me to talk about this because I have been so terribly ill. And one of the things that I'm so thankful for is that during this week that I've had the flu, I have been really, really mindful about what I'm putting in my environment. So like I've had my essential oils diffusing. I have been very careful about what I have been eating and drinking. And as a matter of fact, I'm on like a big um, club soda kick because it's just making me feel so good and really being super careful. But what do I mean by keep your vessel clean? Well, a few years ago, I was at, um, here in Champaign, we have this film festival. It's called Ebert Fest. And um, during Ebert Fest, they play some under, under, how do they call it? Like, under-recognized films and they invite all the stars in or the directors to come in participate so there was a movie called the bronx tale and i just absolutely fell in love with this movie and later on they had a casting party at a local film studio here called shatter glass and chas palmentieri the star of the movie walked in and i was able to have a conversation with him and he looked at me and he said that I was a spiritual warrior. He told me that I was meant to do this work and he was very serious about it. And he said, with anything you want to do in life, you have to keep your vessel clean. And I, that's always stuck with me because I knew what he meant was limit, limit the amount of alcohol you put into your body. Don't smoke. Don't do things that clog your body up. If there are foods that make you feel ill or perhaps you have an allergic reaction to them, it's time to stay away from them. It's time to feed our body with nutrition that is going to that is going to increase our stamina in our body so so important keep your vessel clean when you do that you'll actually um there's so many benefits that come out of it and you can become healthier when you do get sick like i just was you know instead of having the flu for two weeks i had it for just a few days and i'm bouncing back very quickly even though my voice does still sound a bit hoarse so my next thing on the list is to make every choice count. If you've ever listened to me on a podcast or, or if you're reading the book at all, then you know that I'm a big believer in infinite possibilities. If, if we can all agree that infinite possibilities exist, um, you know, it's also important to understand that that doesn't mean you're always creating the good stuff because infinite possibilities is a spectrum. And the important thing that I have to say to the world is that if infinite possibilities exist, I want to show you how do you change a possibility to a probability? How do you connect yourself to the good things that you want in life instead of flowing in the chaos of all of the things that you don't want? And you can do this by a simple practice of understanding that every choice you make in the thinnest sliced moments of life is actually creating the next thing that's going to happen in your life. And you just, you just keep, you can make these choices through a lens of what I call cleanse or clog. Cleanse or clog means that everything you do is either cleansing you or clogging you. So if we talk about this with respect to say your relationship, Everything you say, everything you do, every word you speak, every action you take in that relationship is either cleansing the relationship or clogging it. What I'm really saying is everything is either creating a deeper connection or it's driving a disconnection. And so when we think about that and we try to make choices through this lens of cleanse or clog, it can really change our lives very, very quickly. And especially if you apply it with an 80-20 rule, meaning 80% of the time you want to focus on making good, cleansing, connected choices. You want to do that in, in the major area of your life, like your relationships, your self-care, your career, your finances, your spiritual growth, your home, your wellness, all of these things you can constantly ask yourself, if I do this thing, if I participate in this behavior, will this cleanse or clog me? 
The next item on my list for 2018 is be grateful. So many of my friends know that I've had a pretty serious gratitude practice going on since uh, January 27th, 2015, when I started my very own gratitude group where I have three other women that I text daily gratitudes to. And even though I've had the flu all week, I have been sending my text messages text messages that say things like, I'm so grateful for club soda. I'm so grateful for vitamin C. I'm grateful for crackers that are, you know, really soothing to my stomach when I'm, when I'm just not feeling at my best. And what I've learned over this now three years of this gratitude practice is that I have strengthened the muscle in my brain that looks for things to be good and grateful and I perceive my world much differently than I used to. And so if you can adopt a daily gratitude practice in 2018, you will see some massive changes just by that one practice alone. Um, you know, the next thing on the list is to process the bad shit. You know, I feel like we are smack dab in the middle of a positive psychology movement that doesn't always serve our greater good because what it's missing is a way to process the bad shit. I mean, there's going to be times when you have a problem in life. You know, you get an unexpected bill. There's a problem with your children. There's things that are happening in your life that feel very out of control. And if all we're taught is that we're supposed to be happy, choose to be happy, regardless of our circumstances, then it doesn't really give us a way to process things when the shit hits the fan. And the shit is going to hit the fan. And so... During the series of the Hay House Lives, I'm going to be sharing my I'm going to be sharing my um, process, five steps to break through a breakdown, which is just simple practices that you can do that will help you create positive chemicals in your brain while you're in a very stressful period. It will also help you to eliminate procrastination for good, and so I really look forward to sharing sharing that. Um, Next is eliminate the negative words. So, you know, here it kind of goes along with this because I think when we think about positivity, it means we should be talking positive all the time. So I'm not suggesting that you become a Pollyanna, but what I am suggesting is that you, you identify the negative self-talk, where you are criticizing yourself, where you are abusing and beating yourself up. So if you've made a mistake in your life and you're sitting there saying, oh my gosh, how could I have been so stupid? This is the kind of, uh, this is the kind of negative self-talk that I'm asking you to eliminate. And to, you know, if you use that process to five steps to break through your breakdown, it's going to give you how to process this instead of just tearing yourself up and being abusive to yourself. So lastly, and it's one of the most exciting ones, is to create a menu for your 2018. You know, you can have anything that you want in life, but first you have to put it on your menu. And what I mean by that is that it's the things on your menu that you actually believe are possible. Because if you don't truly believe it, then there's absolutely no way it's going to manifest in your life. So at the very basic of everything, you must believe it's possible. And so we're going to be working on during this monthly series, creating a menu for your life that you can believe in, that you can write a blueprint for, and let's just like challenge ourselves to see how many things we can create on our menus. So, all right. Thank you so much, guys. I um, hope to be feeling better in the next couple of days and sharing some more wonderful information with you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Hey, this is Mary. Thanks so much for watching. Check out a free chapter of my book, Conscious Communications at maryshores.com forward slash free chapter. The link is in the description below.